My name's Nabiha Iqbal and I'm a musician, producer, DJ and broadcaster from London and I'll be performing um, at the V&A Friday Lates playing some of my music that I've just released recently. Music's always been uh, the most favourite thing for me for my whole life and I never actually planned to be doing music full time. I actually did law before. I was planning to be a barrister so I did the bar and after that I worked in human rights law for a little while in South Africa. But then the music side of things just started gathering their own momentum so I decided if not now then when. So I just was like I'm going to go for it and see where it leads me. Love is here and love is now. Love is shy and love is proud. Love won't wait to save the day. People often ask me about what influences my music and sometimes I find it hard to pinpoint specifics with regard to um, particular music that I make just because I feel like when you're a creative, everything that you put out is a product of everything that goes in. But then a lot of the influences, they might come out in quite a sort of subconscious way. The music that I'm performing at Friday Lates is a collection of what I've labelled as lost songs really because earlier this year at the beginning of the first lockdown my music studio was burgled and I lost all the work that I'd been um, doing for the last two years and all my music that was meant to be sort of prep for my next album and at the time it was a real shock to the system because now I've got to start everything again from scratch. But in the meantime, I sort of salvaged a few bits and pieces from um, private SoundCloud links and USB sticks, but I felt like they were ideas that I still really wanted to share. If death is freedom, then kill me now, she said as she took his hand, standing side by side before the gates of horn and ivory, before unforgiving destiny, before fate that grants no mercy. I released all, all of this music as an interim album and I've called it Blue Magic, Gentle Magic and a lot of it's influenced by things like um, the English countryside because some of that music I was I made whilst I was working in a residential studio in Devon called Devon Analog Studio which is really remote and I was there all by myself and you just are surrounded by a beautiful English countryside and a lot of sheep and I was going for runs every morning and just taking in all the nature and then going back to the studio to work and um, also things like I think Thomas Hardy as well because I started reading his books seriously last year and I read Tess of the D'Urbervilles which I think is the best book I've ever read in my life and now I'm going through all of them one by one and his writing and especially the way that he his descriptive um, narratives about nature and the countryside and the feelings and emotions that just come from being part of that that all really influenced this the types of sounds that you hear on this record. When it comes to creative process, I feel like for this music, um, a lot of it was, I guess, a lot of the process was ignited by reading a lot of poetry um, by Keats. Like in my studio, I always keep a few po poetry books because I think that if I'm stuck for something, then just reading a few pages of anything can be a really nice way to just get your ideas flowing again. And it might be for writing lyrics or it might just be for like a feeling or an emotion, you know, that you want to try and capture. So when the VNA got in touch about the possibility of me doing this performance, I really wanted to take the opportunity to kind of expand a bit with the creative collaborations. So I asked one of my favorite visual artists, Tom Flynn, who's designed some album artwork for me before, if he would like to provide the projections for the live performance. Obviously just looking at this space, it's so huge with high ceilings and all these old statues and stonework inside. I feel like once the projections hit all these different shapes and materials it's going to look so special. Sometimes I feel like people don't pay enough attention to the setting and the environment of live music and uh, in a city like London there are so many amazing and interesting spaces that um, are waiting there just to be kind of like appropriated for different creative purposes and 
It's one of the reasons why with my own events and gigs, I'm always interested in putting on parties in places which aren't traditional venues. My, my first record launch was in an old library behind Leicester Square. And so this feels like, you know, going up a few steps from that and being able, you know, being able to have the chance to perform in one of the most iconic institutions of the UK is just, yeah, it feels really special and humbling and also in my own minute way kind of adding something to the whole legacy of the VNA as well. For me, music is definitely the most spiritual art form and there's something about it which is impossible to quantify or to explain really but it's the reason why people make music and I suppose every mu musician in their own way is on like a continuous quest to try and get to the essence of that you know what makes what's special about music why why does it bring people together with music now whether I'm listening to it or preparing for a radio show or thinking about my own music in the studio or how I'll present it live and I feel like you just have to be so open-minded about everything. I'm always up for learning about new things, discovering new music, sharing the things that I find that I love and um, yeah and trying to make music that has evokes some sort of emotional um, response in the listener as well. <laughs>